Hi everybody and welcome to Penfinity. My name is Wes72 and in this four part series, I'm going to show you how to create an ID mask for Blender. It will allow you to create a shader uh, and one click to render will create an ID mask you can then export to use in GIMP or Photoshop. So let me show you how it works exactly. When I click on render, it's going to generate for me the same type of mask you can find on on V-Ray and other render engine. So wait a second. And here we go. As you can see, it's rendered pretty quick. And this is it. You'll be able to use that to separate each element to retouch them in post-production. Okay, so this tutorial is going to be quite long because uh, you have tons of math behind it. And let me show you, let me um, give you a quick overview of the node. Are you ready? <laughs> Sorry for the joke. No, no, it's not going to be a four part series. It's going to be only one and it's going to be quick. And as you can see, the node is extremely simple to create. Extremely simple because uh, I... Uh, I, I require knowledge to be able to solve that problem, but but in fact it's not that simple. And this is what I'm what I talk about uh, all the time. To be able to solve problem, you have to be knowledgeable and uh, use that knowledge in an effective way to 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 be able to have the results you want. And when I started, because in the beginning I was looking for the, this uh, a way to to generate that, and uh, all the solution wasn't really effective. They were time consuming, and I asked myself, uh, how can I create? How can I um, put a color on each object based uh, on their uh, location and randomly? And uh, I forced myself to restrict to six to 10 node maximum. And this is uh, the really important part. To be able to solve problem creatively, you have to uh, put restriction of yourself because, because restriction brings creativity. And uh, this is what I did. And if you know the book, uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, the habit number two is always to start with the end in mind and the hand is to ask yourself this question and reverse the engineering to be able to solve the problem so enough talking and uh, let's start to see how it works okay so first of all uh, this scene is provided by the master grant warwick and this is his site mastering cgi.com.au and if you want to master V-Ray, man, this is the only place to go. The guy is the, is the pure beast. So yeah, uh, it, it provided this shader for free as long as you keep the, the credit of it. And uh, yeah, masteringstgi.com.au, definitely the place to go for V-Ray. Okay, so uh, we're going to start. Uh, to, uh, to be able to put a shadeless color on each element. So for sure, I'm going to use an emission because when you put an emission shader, as you can see, it's shadeless. I don't have any gradation on it. And this is the, the a good base to start. And in fact, if you have the a Node Wrangler uh, enable and you click on preview, it's going to generate a viewing node and the viewing node is nothing but a, a, an emission shader but the problem as you can see it's still emissive and uh, i need to get rid of that to be able to create to create the, the id the id mask so before that let me choose a color i'm going to choose the green one okay so to shut down uh, the emissive, all I have to do is uh, add a light path and say uh, in camera ray, shut down everything. Shut down the strength. So as you can see, let me show you the before after. It's gonna keep only the color. And this is, uh, this is the base to start. Oops, I'm sorry, I delayed it. 
Okay, so let me put that here for now. And now I, uh, I want to randomize the color here. And uh, you're going to find out there uh, techniques like uh, use a color ramp and put uh, multiple colors, up, put the full spectrum of color in it. But this is not the, uh, the efficient way to go because we already have a node doing that for us. And this is the U in saturation. We have this load here. Let me show you. And it will give us the full spectrum. And we're going to use that to be able to, to randomize the color. So let me plug this here. And plug this here. Oh, let me put it to 0.5 for now. And now I need to find a way to randomize that. And as always, we already have a node for that. And this is the object info. The object info has this random slot. And when I'm going to plug it here, as you can see, it's going to uh, put different colors onto it, in, into it, each object. And, and we already have the, the ID mask like this, but I need to do some more tweaking. First of all, I'm going to reduce the saturation and the value like this. And second, uh, because I tested multiple times um, on small and heavy scene, and at some point, you're going to have uh, an uh, object close to each other. They're going to have, even if they are separated, the same color. And for that, I need to include the location, the location slot. And to do that, I'm going to use a math node. And I'm going to, uh, first of all, let me show you what happened when I plug it the uh, location slot. As you can see, I'm going to have the same color everywhere simply because these three objects are exactly on the same location. If I move this one, for example, the color, the color will change. So what I need to do, I need to plug the math node and put it into subtract and add the, the random component. So with that, I'm going to be able to have each object on the scene separated and um, with a different color because I tried it with the add one but the problem is at some point uh, too uh, you're gonna have close object with, with, with the same color so with, with the subtract option it's it's never gonna uh, uh, to happen and this is it this is the basic node for the ID mask and I can group everything like this and all I have to put out is the color because if you want for whatever reason to change to have different color for the ID absolutely no problem you just can switch whatever you want whoops oh I'm sorry I forgot to include the, the emission one let me remove this okay I forgot to include this one okay and then you have it okay you're gonna tell me yeah this is cool but how can I apply it uh, in um, into my scene without having to change all the material you can because if you know blender you have in the render in the scene slot the render layer you have the possibilities to have uh, to put a material here and when you put a material in this slot it's going to override everything in the scene so in this one I already uh, put it here and if I click to render as you can see it will override everything regardless of how many material you have on your scene and here's the kicker. When you when you set the ID with the render layer, you can create a render layer, for example, and you can call it ID. And you can save that 
um, into your, your startup file. So each time you're going to start a project, you're going to have a render layer with the ID and uh, you can keep it unchecked. And when you're going, when you want to have an ID mask, all, uh, all you need to do is just to select this one and you will be able to click render. And uh, of course, you, you have to, to deselect uh, everything if you want the mask only or you just click this one to have all your layer render at the same time and it will generate for you an ID mask and all you need to do after that is import it in GIMP or Photoshop or Krita and do your, your post-production. So this is it. As you can see, really simple and as always, uh, know your stuff. So learn, uh, learn everything about the Cycle Render Engine. Go to the Blender manual two, three, ten times if you want to understand the ins and outs and it will give you power to be able to solve any kind of problem really, really easily. So this is it. I hope it was informative. Uh, if you have any question, of course, don't hesitate to contact me uh, on Instagram at penfinity, uh, uh, pen underscore finity and on my email info.penfinity.com. So thank you very much. I, I hope it was informative and uh, as always, see you soon.